There has never been a time in dentistry where the blending of so many new technologies and concepts has occurred. Implant dentistry has benefited tremendously from the incorporation of three-dimensional CBCT and the ability to fabricate a surgical guide. It is now possible to take a CBCT scan and from that data virtually place mini dental implants to maximize the available bone, increase parallelism, and reduce surgical and healing time by offering a flapless approach. This digital treatment planning can be done without the doctor leaving his office. With a PC and an internet connection, a web conference is conducted to work through all the details of the proposed treatment plan. The need to know how to manipulate the software is removed, as a skilled individual on the other end can move implants around with a few mouse clicks. Adding this kind of technological armamentarium to your toolkit will help ensure a smooth surgical outcome and will help increase the acceptance of a prosthetically driven treatment plan. Many implants have been used successfully to improve the retention of dentures for many years. With the population increasing in age and living longer, the need to improve patients' lives with secure full dentures is growing. Most of these patients will present with inadequate width of bone for traditional implants and may not wish to consider additional surgery. A traditional sized implant will need about six millimeters of bone in the buccal lingual direction, but a mini implant can be placed in as little as three millimeters of buccal lingual width. Mini implants offer immediate loading. This is possible for two reasons. First, the mini implant is supported on both sides by cortical plates. Second, the auto advancing design compresses and condenses the bone to help facilitate primary stability. These smaller implants provide a cost-effective solution to allow more patients to move forward with implant therapy by reducing the number of parts needed in the surgical and the laboratory phase. The patient in this case, a 55-year-old white female, had all her remaining maxillary and mandibular teeth extracted 11 months ago. She received a conventional maxillary and mandibular denture. Her main complaint was that they were non-retentive and non-functional, falling out when talking or eating. Although the extractions were recent and she had not had a denture for a considerable amount of time, visually there was already excessive resorption in the mandible. Radiographically, there was bilateral pneumonization of the maxillary sinus. Prior to obtaining the CT scan, a reline impression with Impergum was taken and the dentures were sent to Glidewell. From that set of impressions, an upper and lower dual scan appliance was fabricated. It is important to note that the more accurate the impression for the scan appliance, the more accurate the surgical guide will be. Any reduction in the movement of the surgical guide will increase the accuracy of the final implant placement. Three CBCT scans on a Gendex iCAT were taken. One of the patient with the scan appliances in the mouth and one of each scan appliance by themselves. From these scans, the Glidewell inclusive mini dental implant could be placed virtually utilizing Blue Sky Plan software. A WebRx was scheduled with the Glidewell inclusive treatment planning team. At that time, the restoratively driven treatment plan was mostly complete. Vital structures, placement paths, and parallelism of the implants were already identified. The digital treatment planning team saves valuable doctor chairside time by completing most of the tedious tasks for you. The final implant positions are confirmed by the dentist and with the approved plan, the surgical guides are fabricated. It is recommended to use six mini implants in the premaxilla region and four mini implants between the mental foramen. In this case, it was decided to use 1.5 millimeter sleeves for the 2.2 millimeter inclusive mini implant in the mandible and due to the soft and thin bone, 1.5 millimeter sleeves for the 2.5 millimeter inclusive mini implants in the maxilla. In denser bone, I would have asked for the 1.7 millimeter sleeves for the maxilla. The 1.5 millimeter sleeves provide guidance for the 1.5 millimeter twist drill. Even though placement of the mini dental implant is straightforward, a common argument against placing them is that the surgery is done blind. With a CT scan and a surgical guide, all of the patient's anatomy, soft tissue anomalies can be factored into the digital treatment plan. To make it clear, this digital treatment plan and surgical guide is not a best guess, but a true representation of what the clinical outcome should be. The surgical guide is fabricated by a computer-controlled printing station and the guide sleeves are placed to tight tolerances. 
The patient was draped and a clean operating environment was established. A preoperative rinse with Paradex was done prior to local infiltration with lidocaine, 2% with 1 to 100,000 epi. The upper surgical guide was inserted and stabilized by both the doctor and assistant. Once a confirmed fit was verified, the 1.5 millimeter twist drill was introduced into the guide sleeves. The guide sleeve would orient the drill in the correct trajectory. The top of the sleeves are set 9 millimeters from the top of the implant. The recommended procedure is to drill one half the depth of the implant plus tissue height. In this case, the six upper mini implants were all 10 millimeters in length and the tissue was approximately 2 millimeters. The 1.5 millimeter twist drill has markings at 10, 13, and 15 millimeters. The total drill depth was 14 millimeters, one half the length of the implant plus 9 millimeters. The drilling process was conducted under copious irrigation on a Novag MD20 at 1,250 RPMs. It is important to minimize tissue damage and thermal trauma to the bone. All six pilot holes were made following the same process and the surgical guide was removed. A periodontal probe was used to confirm that all the pilot holes in the cortical bone did not perforate in the buccal lingual direction. The inclusive implants were removed from their sterile packs and glass containers and hand tightened until they are difficult to turn. The inclusive mini implants are self-tapping and there are no other final drills or bone formers necessary. The implant will follow the path created by the twist drill and compress and condense the bone to help achieve immediate stability. In certain cases, it is possible to engage both cortical plates for even more stability. The handpiece attachment was then used to gently rotate the mini implant to depth. The torque was checked with the torque wrench included in the inclusive surgical kit. The same process was repeated for the mandibular surgical guide. In this case, there were three inclusive mini implants that were 13 millimeters in length, so the pilot bit was taken to depth of around 18 millimeters or almost to the hub. The twist drill from cutting tip to hub is 21 millimeters long. Blue Bite HP was injected into the intiligo surface of the denture to help indicate where the dentures would need to be relieved to allow for a total passive fit over the mini implants. The use of an NTI universal cutter pear shaped burr helps to create the appropriate shaped space. The Axis acrylic burr is 2.9 millimeters wide and cuts a hole just the right size for the O-ball. Once the majority of acrylic was removed, Dr. Thompson's marking sticks were used to mark the top of the O-ball. Any marks that transferred to the intiligo surface of the denture was removed to ensure a total passive fit. A chair-side reline was done with CoSoft to stabilize the dentures. In a few weeks, the process will be started to make a new set of inclusive mini implant retained dentures. If the patient was satisfied with the aesthetics of her existing denture, we would have done a lower chair-side pickup of the O-ring housings. A post-operative CT scan was taken. The cross-sectional slices demonstrate the implants in almost the exact proposed positions and have taken advantage of all the available bone while keeping the mini implants as parallel as possible. This case would have been multiple degrees more difficult for any clinician without the use of a digitally milled surgical guide. The Glidewell Inclusive Mini Dental Implant System and Digital Treatment Planning Services together offer a way for general practitioners to get involved in implant dentistry. In today's economy, offering this kind of treatment provides a way for patients to have secure and retentive dentures. The use of CBCT digital planning and surgical guide helps to reduce clinician stress and saves chair time. The flapless technique allows for less discomfort and a greater chance for immediate load, both of which improve patient satisfaction. These simplified protocols and conservative procedures are made possible by integrating technology and new materials into everyday implant dentistry.